Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. Sorry guys, I've been a little bit absent lately. Um, as I mentioned in previous videos, I have been doing a lot of sort of reorganizing. So you will notice that there's a little bit more uh, visual interest in the background and uh, I'll be going over that in a future video. Um, after relocating and so forth, I, I had quite an interesting time getting my internet up and going again. Unfortunately for me, um, you know, Comcast, uh, well, it was a very long story. Uh, but thanks to them for finally reaching out to me and getting all my problems resolved. That was very, very nice. Although someone needs to work on their spelling. But anyways, we got it all sorted out in the end. Uh, today, though, we're going to be talking about something I've been meaning to make a video about for quite some time now. And that is how to set up the Wi-Fi on Sony cameras. Let's go ahead and take a look at this, shall we? In setting up the Wi-Fi on the Sony cameras, the really, really nice thing is that there is a lot of continuity between all of Sony's cameras in terms of Wi-Fi setup. It doesn't really matter if you have like an A6300 or an A7 series camera, or even something like the RX100 Mark IV that we're using today. Sony gives you pretty much the same feature set with wireless on all their models. Now guys, there are a few little nuances between all the different cameras. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below so you guys can kind of get an idea of what sorts of nuances you may see. But the cool thing is, for the most part, the Wi-Fi setup is identical. Um, if your camera doesn't look like the camera I'm showing today and you have questions, definitely write me in the comments below. Um, also be sure that you go ahead and update your firmware on your camera to the latest version because I've noticed that if you have the older Sony uh, embed, smart embedded remote uh, and not the newer version, I've noticed that you do have different options. So be sure to do the update. And uh, if a lot of you guys have questions about doing that update, write me about that in the comments below too because I'll be sure to make a video in the future to show you how that whole process works out. Um, in the meantime though, let's go ahead and take a look at the Wi-Fi setup using the RX100 Mark IV. Okay, so taking a closer look at the camera now, uh, you'll notice that there's actually a couple different ways that you can set things up with the Wi-Fi and there's a couple different tasks you can do. Now, <clears throat> the most common thing that people wanna do with the Wi-Fi settings on any camera is simply being able to transfer their pictures from the camera to their smart device. <clears throat> so that way you have a very, very easy time transferring things to Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all that lovely social media stuff. So a couple ways you can do this. Um, I have a few photographs on this camera's memory card now. If you go into our playback here, we can actually see some pictures that I have. If we say, hey, I love this picture right here, I want to transfer it, we can actually press the FN button here. And it's basically like a Wi-Fi transfer button when in playback. Press there. And we get greeted by this screen. Now, this one basically is designed for quick and easy sending of images. Um, if you do this image, it well, it will do just this image. You can do all images on this date, or you can do multiple images. The thing that's interesting about doing multiple images from this particular uh, point in the camera, if you select the uh, Wi-Fi send option here, if you select multiple images, you are limited to picking out which images you want to send using the camera itself. So you'll notice there's a little check uh, box over there. As you hit this middle uh, middle selector button here, you'll notice that that basically marks that picture for transfer, just like that. So that's what's happening. Um, this is very, very good to use if you're you know wanting to do things fairly quickly, but this is not my preferred way of doing it. I actually like transferring images by going into the menu instead. So if we actually go into the camera's menu, we can go in here to the Wi-Fi or wireless submenu. And if we go down here, oh yeah, and by the way, uh, sometimes I like putting the camera onto airplane mode to disable all the wireless um, if I'm not using it to save battery life and so forth. Um, anyways, but if we go in here and go to send a smartphone like this, now we have an option to actually select 
the pictures that we want to send on the camera or we can select them on the smartphone. Now, when it says select on this device, it means this camera. So I've seen a few people confused by that. Down here, if you say select on smartphone, you will basically see all the pictures. You'll basically use your phone as a browser to browse the pictures that are still on your phone. And then you select them using your phone and then they get sent that way. And this is actually my preferred way of doing it. Um, I mean, you may prefer to do it the other way. You can do it either way, but I just like this method. If you go right here to select on smartphone, then the camera goes into Wi-Fi standby. And you can see it shows the camera's SSID and it shows the password. So if I grab my trusty smartphone here, I actually love you guys a lot because I made this video once before and I realized that my phone screen was filthy and I actually am remaking this video just so I could have it uh, have a clean screen. So don't say I don't care about you guys. <laughs> um, so if we go into the settings here and if we go, actually I'm going to lower my brightness on my phone's going a bit. Now the screen's going to be filthy again anyway. People are liking my photos on Instagram. Okay, we go there. I'm having depth perception problems, seeing as how I'm having to look at my hands through the camera screen I'm filming. Okay, so we select that. Now once we have this selected, now we can go into our Sony uh, Play Memories app, which I'll have to pull up again. There it is right there. And there you have it. So now they're, they're friends. And so I can go in here and I can actually see the images that are on my camera at this point. I can go in and I can select different ones. Okay. So if I go in there and tap that, you can see it becomes selected. And I can go through all these. Now, you will notice that these images are in RAW. If you are shooting in RAW, the camera will actually automatically convert these for you. So I have those selected and then I come down here and go to copy and then it's done. Go over to here and there's the two images I just selected. So pretty cool. It works very, very fast, very easy. And then of course, once they're on the smart device, you can do whatever you like with them. Now, the other thing that you can do with this app is you can actually, uh, you can actually control your camera from your smartphone also. And this is something that gave me a little bit of trouble at first. Sony, they used to, uh, and they still do to a certain degree, um, I suppose, uh, ship their cameras with an app called Smart Remote Embedded. And yeah, if you guys didn't know this, they actually do have a little app store that's kind of like Google Play or something. Uh, but you go into your camera's menu, you go to this applications uh, sort of sub menu, and then go to applications list, and you can actually can navigate to the Play Memory Store using your camera. It actually will connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot and do that sort of thing. I don't recommend doing that because it's 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 really really crazy trying to navigate um, <laughs> a store and type and stuff on this thing, especially since it has no touch screen, and most of Sony's cameras don't have a touch screen, so it's pretty tricky. If you need to do an update, which if you have the older app which is called uh, Smart Remote Embedded. Uh, you will basically find that you can take pictures using your phone, but you can't change any of the manual settings. So anyways, I'm not sure why Sony came up with a new app and gave it this new name, but a similar icon. I was very confused at first as to why I couldn't adjust things manually. <clears throat> but anyways, if you go in and download this new app, you can actually do that uh, using the link that I'm going to provide to you in the description below. Just go on your computer, download it that way, and then you can connect your camera and actually do the update using the computer instead. And it's much faster than trying to go to the App Store on the camera itself. If you guys have questions about how that uh, whole process works, let me know in the comments and I will make a video to show you. Um, anyways though, we go in here, Smart Remote Control, the app starts up. And you have an option to actually be able to 
um, scan a QR code to link up the camera and the phone. I recommend skipping this because I've tried it a couple times and I don't know. I, I haven't seen anyone get this done easily and successfully. It sounds good in theory but not in practice. So you can just hit this little trash can button which is also the custom function there. And you can skip past that. And then it gives you the same um, SSID and password information. And you can just do it the old fashioned way. In my particular case, since I have gone ahead and um, already set this up, once again, I'm gonna just go into my settings on my phone. They, and it's going to uh, you know make a connection with the camera. Once we go into those uh, Wi-Fi settings there, and then I can simply go back to that Sony Sony app again. And then there you have it. So then they connect. Once again, they're friends. So basically, once we're here, <clears throat> this is where you'll see a little bit of a difference in terms of what capabilities you have, just depending on what camera you're using. Since I'm using an RX100 series camera, I actually do have control of my zoom since the camera has power zoom. If you're using a uh, mirrorless camera with interchangeable lenses and all that, um, if you're using a power zoom lens, you'll have this control as well. Obviously though, if you don't have a power zoom lens on your mirrorless, uh, you won't be able to do this. But there you have it, you can do that. <clears throat> they also have added the ability to tap to focus now. So you can come in here and you can tap in different spots and it will actually go ahead and focus there for you, which is pretty neat. And of course, we can take the pictures. Um, we can also go in here and we can uh, we can actually change uh, some of our manual settings as well. So if we go and hit this little icon here, you could see I can go in there and I can change my ISO like that, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I can change f-stop. And one thing too that I notice now is that you have a bulb setting in your shutter speed adjustment. So if we go all the way down there, we can go to bulb. And basically, uh, you just press and you can drag it down like that. It starts to do the whole bulb thing. It counts down in the top left there to tell you how long your exposure is. And then after that, you can simply go up like that. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. That's awesome. Really good job on that, Sony. So anyways, all in all, pretty straightforward with everything. Um, like I say, guys, if there's anything you want to see on this uh, in more detail, just let me know. If you have questions, um, and of course, don't forget that I am going to be linking to those uh, different FAQs and the whole information about how to update the Play Memory camera apps. And yeah, since I have Instagram open, yeah, go find me on Instagram. I am, well, you know my name. I'm Photog J the Great. I sound like a rapper saying that or something. Anyways, go follow me on there. Um, and of course, don't forget to subscribe right in the comments below. Until next time, guys, this is Jeremy Smith signing off.